hello, I am Lisa Hennessy, and this is episode 85 of Knit, Pray, Crochet. It is Tuesday, but I am taping. I had, um, this past weekend, my nephew got married, my middle brother's son, Luke, um, he got married on Saturday in Houston, and so because we were having to drive and we're taking a road trip, I thought, this is the perfect opportunity to start my sweater. So it was a three... I think it took us four hours driving there because the traffic was so bad going into Houston on Friday night. And then on Sunday, it took us probably about three and a half hours to get home. So this is all the knitting I got done on my sweater. And it was, um, I'll, have to, I'll put the name of the show notes because I can't remember. Because now that I'm knitting around, I don't remember the, the name of it. But it used bamboo yarn, so I used my favorite bamboo lady. Um, this is their swirl, and I, I'm not sure, I did do, oh, I don't ever do swatches, but I did these swatches too, because I um, used one size needle for the ribbing, and then one for the stockinette, and because I did spend, I don't know, 60 or $70 on my yarn, I thought I better swatch it, because I want to make sure I can wear what I make, because I, if it doesn't fit, I give stuff away which is not a big deal, but when I spend 60 or $70 on yarn, I'd like to keep it. So I did swatches. I've never, ever done that before in my life, but I did. I made swatches, and it, I was right on. My gauge was fine, but I'm not sure. I mean, even though I did spend this money on yarn, I don't know yet if I'm going to keep it for myself. It's going to be a tank top, and it's super soft and silky, but I'm not crazy about the way the yarn is pooling. I liked it when it was striped. But now it's doing this, so it totally looks different. I don't know. If it starts to stripe again, then maybe I'll like it. I don't know. But I'm going to keep going. Um, I'm actually, I'm going to be driving, so I won't be a passenger, so I won't get a lot of knitting done. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be uh, doing a video next week because I don't know how much knitting I'm going to get done. Um, my girlfriends that I went to high school with, and two of them, um, well, Sandra, did I meet Sandra? Sandra I met in, I think, eighth grade. Christy and I have been friends since fifth grade, and then Maggie we met in high school. So the four of us are getting together in Austin this weekend. So I'm driving on Friday and coming back, I don't know, Sunday or Monday. My husband's staying back, so he can help with my mom if I need any help. So I haven't decided yet. She seems to be doing okay. Um, it's, how she is depends on whether I come home Sunday or Monday, but... If I don't get a lot of knitting done, I might skip taping next week. I don't know. We're just going to see. So I, and then I did finish. This is my, um, what do I call it? It's a tie headband with the I cord edging. And I have a pattern and that I will put in the show notes with the PDF. I don't know if I'll have it written on this episode, but for sure the next episode. And then I'm trying to get a video to go along with it to show how I did the I cord cast on and bind off. I think the one I did for the bind off is okay, but when I did the cast on cable, I was using these small six needles and it was really hard to do a video with that because I'm videoing and I, it was slipping. So I might try to do the cast on with a different size needle because I'm making this, I want to make this in red um, so that I can give these away for the 4th of July. But this just turns out, it's really cute. It's really not that complicated. Um, and you don't have to, you can just do a regular cast on bind off. I just like how kind of looks on the edges for the tie it makes it a little fancier but you don't have to do that you know I might do that as an option so I finished my headband got a ton done I think I've got to do this for 14 inches so I think I I'm at nine or ten inches so I have four or five inches left of that so I I got all that done this week and then um I did give away I had the headband that was not a tie one it was just the i-cord um edging headband I was getting a pedicure last week because, you know, I need my toes to look all pretty for the wedding. And the girl that was doing my pedicure was asking me what I was knitting, and I was working on this one. And I said, I, I'm, I'm making a headband. And I, and I had a whole bag of my headbands in my knitting bag. And I said, here, would you like one? And she goes, oh, it's for winter. I said, no, these are cotton. You can wear them anytime, but they're great to pull your head back and wash your face at night. Um, just pick whichever one you want. And she picked the red one. So I did give away the headband, and I told her I prayed over it. Um, so anyway, I did get a, I gave one gift away um, this week. So far, I haven't. It's Tuesday, like I said. Um, so you know, God willing, um, I'll be. Oh, you know what? I bet I will give something away because 
tomorrow, I've got a busy week. I really, I'm not going to get a ton of knitting done this week. Um, I'm helping at the apparel mart, it's gift market, and I'm helping in a showroom Wednesday and Thursday. But I like to give away, I have some of my felted gift card holders, and I usually like to give one of those away to the, one of the custodians that are cleaning the bathrooms because they have to pick up after people that don't appreciate them. And I really like to let them know, or one of the crossing, um, the police officers, the off-duty officers that are helping us cross the busy streets to get to and from the market. So I will, I'm sure I'll probably give something away Wednesday or Thursday. I just, I don't know what or who, but God does. So, and that's all that matters. Now I'd like to read my blog post from nipprayshare.com that posted on Monday, June 17th. And it is called a new heart and spirit. And the scripture is Ezekiel 36, 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And again, that's Ezekiel 36, 26. So Sunday, which was also Father's Day, was the 29th anniversary of my first husband, first husband John's death. And in a matter of seconds, my world was just turned upside down. I talked about it a little bit last week. Um, my future was ripped away from me. The life that I had looked forward to was no longer going to be occurring. And so I went from being happily married, married, with a moving truck scheduled to move us into a recently purchased and remodeled home to a, which, and I would have been living in a new town. So rather than have the moving trucks move us, we scheduled a U-Haul to move my son and I into my parents' home. So that was not quite the life I had anticipated, but God gave me a new heart to not be bitter for my circumstances. What broke my heart is what made my heart. It softened me to enable me to minister to other broken people in a different way. I was able to minister in the name of Jesus. So remembering this time in my life, even though it can bring me tears, the truth is it reminds me of God's steadfast love. He never gave up on me in my wandering days when I wasn't aware that he was missing from my life. There is power in remembering where I was and how far God has brought me and how far he's still bringing me. You know, how it must have grieved God's heart when I was living a life without him. I was raised in the church. I knew better. But thankfully, when we turn back to God, he always welcomes us back home. And so that's, you know, there might be someone watching this. If, if you raise your child in a Christian home and in the church, there is hope. That foundation was laid. They, God will draw them back to him, but it's going to be in his timing and they have to, so, you know, you just pray for their hearts to be softened and God to grab their heart, bring, bring them back to him. So when John died, I couldn't even imagine a life for me and my children without him in it. However, once I started living a life with Jesus in it, that reality became more bearable. Yes, I was still sad. I still grieved his death, but I had a reason to find joy. I saw all the love, kindness, and compassion that Jesus provided for me, for my family, friends, and to strangers. So my identity went from being a wife and mother to a daughter of the King. Since God's Spirit lives in me, He has been able to use me for nearly 30 years. I cannot believe it's been nearly 30 years to comfort others in their grief. And because of what I've been through, as well as what I'm going through with my mother, I'm able to offer hope and comfort to others who are in similar or have been in similar circumstances. And speak of the devil, she's calling me. This is her second time. Um, she's upset because I have a busy week this week and I don't have enough time for her. And so um, I guess she forgot that I just spent an hour and a half with her this morning at the doctor's office, but that's okay. You know what? I had two really good weeks with her, so I cling to those good weeks when I have the weeks where she's a little more needy. But that's where God can use me. He can use me for other people who are going through a similar circumstance with an aging parent who might have dementia. So from high school until my late 20s, I was a wanderer. I was wandering in the ways of the world. It took my first husband's tragedy, his death, 29 years ago, to be brought back to the heart of God. When we encounter the risen Savior through salvation, it changes our heart body, and soul. It changed mine. It'll change yours. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I encourage you, open up your Bible. Talk to friends that are Christians. It makes you a better person. I Just like with my mom calling, I'm not, I, don't have, I don't have the anxiety. My heart's not beating fast. And again, this is another phone call. This is the third one since I've been taping. But you know what? It's okay. 
because God calms my soul. And I just cling to that. I'd like to end with my prayer now. Father God, thank you for giving me a new heart and spirit. You have been able to use my heartaches and hurts to show others how you care so deeply for each of your children. Thank you for your tender care in every day of my life. I cling to your promise that you never leave me or forsake me. I lift those up to you who are searching to fill a hole in their heart that only you can mend. Lead them to brothers and sisters in Christ who can share their testimony of how Jesus changes lives. I pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you again for joining me for episode 85. If you like this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you're making things, knitting, praying, crocheting, whatever you're making, please post on social media, tag me at Knit, Pray, Share. I love to see how other people are using their hands and their heart to bless people in their community and let them know God loves them and they matter. God bless you. Have a great week. And I will see you for episodes 86, whenever that might be. It might be next week. It might be the week after. I don't know. But I just encourage you, keep doing what you're doing, living a life for Jesus.